Innovators, in today's video, we will replace the toilet flush control unit and also talk about the water and waste system on our plane. But before we tackle about the water and waste system, first I would like to discuss about ATA chapters. What is ATA chapter? ATA chapters, sometimes called ATA 100 system codes, are a way of categorizing the various systems that are on a plane. Originally created by the Air Transportation Association in 1956, Air Transportation Association published a numbering system to learn and understand the technical features of an aircraft. ATA chapters make it easy to categorize technical information. Here are some of the list of ATA chapters. Now let's start to discuss about Chapter 38, the Water and Waste System of an Aircraft. Have you ever wondered how does an airplane toilet system works? So let's imagine we're in course and you've been into the toilet and you press the flush button. An electrical signal is sent to the flush control unit and it checks the airplane's current altitude. The control unit opens up the water valves to rinse the toilet. And a second lately, you can hear the flush valve open and sucking up the disposal. The differential pressure now moves the waste from the toilet bowl into the waste holding tank. Above 16,000 feet altitude, the flush cycle will stay the same, but the vacuum system controller will remove the electrical power from the vacuum generator and stops the generator operation. Now let's say we're on ground and you are in the plane but the flight is being delayed. However, you desperately have to go to the toilet. So after using the toilet, you press the flush button and the flush control unit registers via a pressure gauge that the plane is still on ground. So there is no differential pressure creating the necessary suction and that's where the vacuum generator comes into action. The generator is electrically driven similar to your household vacuum cleaner and creates the suction pressure in the waste tank and pipes. So the toilet works no differently as if the plane were on cruise. The vacuum generator starts to operate after the operation of the flash switch on the ground and in flight below 16,000 feet and stays on for approximately 15 seconds. The water valve opens 1.6 seconds after the operation of the flush switch and stays open for 1.7 seconds. In this time, the toilet bowl is rinsed. The flush valve opens 2.2 seconds after operation of the flush switch and it stays open for 4 seconds. And to clarify one ongoing rumor, no your waste does not go overboard. The waste and water level can be checked on the FAP, the forward attendant panel, and in case the waste tank is full, the flight attendant will notify the cockpit crew as they have no indication of the system in the cockpit. They then would request water waste service on a special service frequency via radio. Once the service truck arrives, a large hose is attached onto the servicing panel at the rear of the aircraft and the drain valve is open and the waste tank is sucked up empty within seconds. Now, let's talk about the water system of the aircraft. The potable water system is entirely independent from the waste system. During flight, parts of the engine lead air system is directed to the water tank to pressurize the entire system, creating the necessary power to push the water through the pipes so you can wash your hands in lavatory sink. So where does all the used water go? No, it does not go in the waste tank. It all goes to overboard. So once you wash your hands, the soapy water runs through the drain pipes to either the front or the rear part of the airplane depending on which lavatory you wash your hands and exit the plane via the heated drain mast. 
heated obviously to prevent the mast from busying up. During winter operation, both systems need to be drained prior of the airplane to prevent the tanks from freezing up and damaging the pipes and other sensitive equipment within the plane. Now, let's replace the toilet flush control unit. Check first the aircraft maintenance manual for your reference. Pull out the CV's vacuum toilet system lavatory power. Open the lavatory door and remove the toilet shroud. This is the location of the flash control unit. I put a plastic cover above the toilet to avoid touching its surface. Remove all the attached poles of the flush control unit. Remove the cannon plugs. Remove the ground connector. Now install the new flash control unit. Attach the ground connector. Remove the plastic tabs. Now install the bolts. Connect all the cannon plugs. Push the circuit breaker and now do an operational test. Replacement of flash control unit complete. And now we reach the end of this video. I hope you've learned a lot and please stay tuned for more aviation vlogs.